Well, welcome to workshop two on So You Want to Be a Web Developer. My name is Dan Walleen, and in this workshop, we started off by reviewing some of the tags that we talked about in the previous workshop. And if you're new to this series and new to web development, you'll definitely want to make sure that you catch this first workshop because it'll set the foundation for everything we're going to cover. And you'll learn some of the key HTML tags, what HTML is, how browsers work, and things like that. Now we started off by having the people that attended live uh, review their homework assignments, which was to go out to a website and find some different tags, about three or four of them, and then report on those. So some of the tags that they brought up you'll see are things like the image tag, extremely common, uh, table tag for tabular data, something with quotes, and some more for like bulleted lists and lists of items in general. So we'll talk about those. Now at the end of the workshop, we then go in and we talk a little bit about something called CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. This is how you style the HTML tags that you put in the web browser that ultimately show the page that the user sees. So we're gonna cover a lot more about CSS and styles in general in later workshops. But for this one, I basically introduce the fundamentals of what it is, talk about some of the properties, and then Next time we get together, we'll be going over more details there. So jump on in and I hope you enjoy coming along for the ride, uh, whether you're just trying to change careers and get into web development, or maybe you've done programming but wanna learn web development, whatever it may be, thanks for tuning in. We're gonna uh, start up workshop number two here with a quick story on something on uh, you know, why it's cool to be a developer. And then we're gonna jump into you guys' homework and have you talk about that real quick. Uh, once we're done with that, we're gonna jump back to here and then we're gonna talk about some more HTML today and probably maybe at the end start to get into CSS. Danny, you are again in charge of uh, in say 45 minutes, let me know. Which is what, 10 after, is that right? Yeah, 7, 10, <laughs> something like that. That was pretty quick math on the fly, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hard core math. <laughs> All right. Um, so for those that didn't watch the last workshop, uh, it is online on YouTube. And uh, Jeff went to get a URL, and I'm sure he watched the whole thing because it is better than watching Netflix, right? Right. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure they're going to call us, and we'll have our own Netflix show now. So you want to <laughs> be a Netflix web developer. of the developing world. That's right. <laughs> Go away, person down there. We have a person that's not participating who's giving me giving me crap down there. Uh, so, first off, reason I really like being a web developer overall. Now, I'll admit it's like any job. But, uh, well, I know, Seth, you're, well, you probably don't have time nowadays, but you like games, right? You play games at all, Jeff? Yeah? Uh, I haven't lately, but I used to a lot. And Danny's been playing uh, Battlefront 2. Mm-hmm lately a little bit which is super cool it's like watching a movie almost um now obviously being a software developer i'm not talking about writing the games although you could technically with a lot of the skills um there's actually a framework out there called unity 3d which you can use kind of a variant of javascript which we'll cover in a later workshop and you literally could write the game some of them that you might play on an xbox or ps4 actually are created in that it's unity 3d.com um, it's like amazing. I don't know if you ever saw the little Facebook uh, integration Stonehenge thing I did years ago with someone. Yes. That was in Unity. Um, so what I really like about it, and then we'll, like I said, get into the content, is if you kind of like a, you like a job where, well, number one, you're always trying to find how the puzzle piece fits. <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't fit. That part is not so fun. Um, when you're debugging a problem, Danny's seen me many times where I'm in my office and he's like, Hey, how's it going? And I'll be like, you know, which pretty much means I've been debugging something for like an hour or more, you know, and sometimes it's hard. Sometimes you, you're like five seconds later, you're like, Oh yeah. Like, you know, duh. But I think that's the number one fun part of the job is like every day. It's like playing a game, like a logic game. Um, and every time you do something, you know, a little bit, Jeff, cause you've been doing the, the WordPress stuff. And, you know, you hit a roadblock and then there's nobody else to ask. You know, you can go online maybe, but you kind of got to solve it. And so, anyway, for those watching, if you're, you know, thinking about getting into it, um, I think that's one of the fun things. Uh, I mentioned the other really cool thing about it is 
not the, so much the corporate jobs, although even some of those, but a lot of the jobs out there, uh, you can work, you know, remotely a lot of times. Um, in fact, if you get to the point where you do your own, like contracting on the side, which you could do and play it with your regular day job, of course, you know, you could have both if you don't want to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, you can pretty much do that from anywhere, um, which is cool. Uh, I won't say that all the corporate, like a lot of the corporate things I go to, they might let you telecommute, you know, like any job, maybe a couple days a week or something like that. Do you just get money? I did. <laughs> <laughs> <Sound> like, <laughs> I sold <laughs> cha-ching. There's a sale of some sort on Etsy. Oh, is it really? Yeah, is that really what it is? <laughs> <laughs> so if we hear cha-ching, cha-ching, we'll know that, hey, Jeff's in the money, buy us pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the first thing I really like is, is like every day is, uh, it's almost like solving a puzzle every day. Uh, second one is the flexibility. Um, the third one ties into the flexibility and I I'll save some more for other, you know, workshops, but, and that is not that you guys are looking to move cause we love it here, but, um, you can live anywhere. I mean, you wanted to move for whatever reason to back to green Bay. Good luck with the cold. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff doesn't look super excited about that. No offense to people in Green Bay, by the way. Very pretty in the, what, summer, fall, a little bit of spring. I went there in the winter. There's a whole other level of cold. Uh, I thought I knew what cold was until I went to Green Bay. <laughs> but, I mean, that honestly is cool. I mean, if you wanted to literally go, like, rent, you know, an Airbnb or whatever and go work in France, you know, technically, depending on the job, you could, which is cool. So, Having said that, our homework was to find, uh, what did I say, three or four tags yeah. and, yep. and then discuss them. Did you happen to do that? I did. I was having a little trouble on a couple things. Okay. Well, we can talk about it. Um, since I know <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's like, slacker. Star student over here. <laughs> slacker. Did you write down your tags? Um, I have actually in my uh, docs file. But- Okay. All right. I don't know if we should believe him, guys. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, Jeff, you're first. Okay. I did the image. Okay. I did the table. Okay. And image and table. I also did uh, the ordered list. The ordered list. Okay. Let me uh, switch this into desktop. So, let's talk about those then. So, image, uh, hmm, what could that be for? Maybe for images. Let me get rid of this guy. Okay, so if we had an image, um, how do you, did you write down how to do it? No. Oh, <laughs> look at this. It's like, image equals, uh, close, the, image, or source, yep. uh, source, source equals, source equals quotations, yep. your URL. Yep. So this would be like, it could be a local image, like maybe you have a local images folder. Uh-huh. And when I say local here, I don't mean local, you know, in the browser, because obviously where's the browser hitting? Uh, where's where's the browser the getting server. everything from? The server. The server. So if you had the image on your server in like an images folder at the root of your web server, the root meaning, you know, your website sits like in a folder, and then there's a subfolder called images, we'll say. Then it'd be like images, you know, my image dot what? Uh, I know you're good at these because you do a lot with images. <laughs> yeah, PNG, ping, or JPEG. JPEG. Now, I have for 20 something years said GIF, and I was convinced it always was a GIF. And then the guy that invented it came out and said, no, it, it's GIF. Which I'm like, so wrong. I'm like, dude, that's peanut butter. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't even do it now because everybody calls it GIF. I said, I, I said, it. it's a GIF. He said, I'm just like, you can't do that to me, man. I, I it's old dog. You know, you can't teach new tricks. Uh, yeah. Which uh, nowadays on the web, I won't say you won't use GIFs, otherwise known as GIF. Uh, but definitely JPEG for photos, right? And ping for kind of you could do photos, but a lot of times it'll be for like uh, drawings, art, Use them type of stuff. I have to have the backgrounds dropped out. Background. Of you can do you transparency. Know, yeah, you can't put a Photoshop. Yep. On your web, so you got to do a 
can't put a PSD. That, yeah, so you can't do this if you're a Photoshop developer. <laughs> okay, and then when you're done, you, you might see it like this. What we, anyone remember last week what we called that? A closing tag. In this case, we call it a self-closing yeah, tag. Self -closing. That means it doesn't ever have content inside of the start and the end tags we talked about last week. Remember how, you, remember how in a lot of tags, well, you can see it right below. Uh, you know, you might have like that, right? Well, with images, you don't do that. You could just do that right there nowadays. HTML5 got less strict. You're going to see me do this because for the last uh, 20 years, <laughs> you've always had to self-close it. Yeah, technically that one, uh, like the BR tag, you remember? Well, I don't have it in here, do I? What was, what was the BR tag? Break. Break. Remember how I did a yeah. self-closing? You technically don't have to. So, because they're not content tags. So, now I'm going to do it that way because I've, it's just, in my mind, I feel like I dotted the I, you know, across the T's and I feel like, I don't know, better about myself or something, but it literally doesn't matter. Um, browsers will respect it either way. Now, we don't want to do that, right? Ping is extremely common. So, just as a quick example, now you'll notice right now, if we go back, See, that's a broken image up there. But that's all it is to do an image. So if we went off to, I know last week we went to ESPN, right? Well, we could possibly do, let's see, open image in new tab. Wow, that's a big image. <laughs> uh, now, eh, see, now they might be blocking this, actually. We'll, we'll see. They might require it to come from the ESPN domain. We will see. They probably are. Nope, they're not. And there you go. And now I have, you know, that image, and now I'm probably set up for a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing you got to be careful. You never want to put images on your website that you know, aren't your images. Now, uh, it's really big, right? Uh, yeah, so you can go put a space after your next one, and you yep. say width. Okay, that'd be one way. Yeah. Equals. Quotation, say 500. Okay. Yep. And then notice how it's auto scaling the height? Yeah. That's it's it's doing an aspect ratio, it's called. So you only do one. Now, width is totally a valid attribute. The normal way, though, how did I say we're going to style most things? CSS. CSS. So let me just, we're going to start doing a little CSS possibly today, but definitely next week. We could do style width is 500 pixels that and get the same thing. But now you set yourself up so you can so you use CSS for that. Right. Well, and once we get to CSS class, is this, is this reusable? Uh, or is it only for this no, image tag? For yeah. So eh, not a great approach. But do you, so do you want to like kind of format everything the same way, like just so you get in the habit of doing it basically? Uh, normally what I'll do is make the CSS class, it's called. Um, now, for images, though, it's different, right? Because every image might have a right. slightly different thing. Right. So here's, the, here's where things are going right now. Um, how important, really dumb question, but go with the floor. How important in, like, a shopping cart is it, especially on mobile, for that page to load almost instantly? Okay. Very important. So what some people are doing is this will allow this to load almost instantly once the image is ready uh -huh. because the style is embedded. Okay. And they have what's called above the page, um, or above the fold, I mean. Um, yeah. And, you know, when you load the page, yeah. you, you can only see this much. Right. Well, some people, I don't go this far because I'm not building, you know, uh, uh, Amazon.com. And we'd have to look like, what does Amazon do? But... When they have above the fold, they'll put inline styles like this uh -huh. because then it just, you don't have to load a separate file okay. for the styles. Does that make sense? Yes. Because now it's part of the HTML. So once the HTML comes to the browser, boom, the style's there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. Anything else on image you researched? Uh, let's see. I did. Yeah, that's it. Let's see if I could shrink this a little bit. That's all. Okay. What other? Uh, put in there, but you could obviously you could center it or. You know, yep. 
You can do all kinds of stuff. You could do text align, for instance. And if this was in a container, which right now it's not, it's taking up the whole page. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to center it when it's in the page. Exactly. But there's some different alignment attributes you can do. And again, for now, ignore the styles. Um, I'm going to leave that in there just so we can see the image. But makes sense? Okay. What other uh, tags? I you did, said table? I did a table. Okay. So um, I did, I put a. So table, right? Yeah, you can open it, table, and then table head. Okay. Yeah, T head. Okay. Yeah. Now that's optional, but this okay. is for you know when you think of a, an Excel spreadsheet, and you always have the header row tip. Well, not always, but typically, and then under that you have the data. Uh -huh. That's your T head. T head, and then so let me put that in. So T head. Okay, so that's like your header of the table. Uh huh. And then I think it's T. Yeah. So you can or do TR. TR. Yep. TR, TR for rows. For the rows. Table row. And then you could do TD or you can, it's called TH. Okay. For kind of a head. I'll put uh, like first name. Okay, and there we go. Okay. Now let's do, uh, how would I put last name? Would I put another TR? What's the TR? Uh, no, another TH. Another TH. What's the TR? One more time. It's a row. It's a row. Okay, so it's the horizontal yeah. for those watching. And then your TH or TD, you're going to see that in a moment, is your columns. That's right. Um, which, you know, it would have been cool if they just would have called that. How about we just call it row and column? But, <laughs> eh, alas, this has been around for forever. We so, let's copy that. And we tap that over, and we'll do last name. Or, whoops. Last name. Okay, cool. Uh -huh. And then, of course, we can style it. We're not going to do that right now. What else can you do? So you have a T head. So you got a T head, and then uh, T the body. Yep, good. T and, body. Uh, and then uh, you got the... Same thing as above, uh -huh. almost, which you is... The, how do you do a row? Uh, you know, uh, T or... Uh, TR, yep. Okay, it's TR, but these are the T. These are TV. That's right. So Jeff. Um, table data. Yep. Table data data. data. Then who you talk to with yeah. their with their accent. Yeah. And now <laughs> notice how it lines up perfectly. Now it's kind of hard because yeah. there's no grid lines. We could style it though. Um. So how do I add in uh, Seth? What would I grab? Would I grab all that or just this? I need to make a new row, right? Okay, so copy that, paste it right below. And I'm really picky on my formatting. It helps though. Like that. And now we'll change it to Seth Senior. No, it'd be Senior Seth. <laughs> And then we got Danny. Put you in. And there we go. See how it lines up? Now, pros and cons, what do you think? Uh, What's good about a table first off? Organized. Organized. So if you have true tabular data, if you're at work and you have sales numbers and you want it to line up per customer or whatever, okay, tables are still used for that. So a lot of people will tell you that, oh, never use tables, use divs. And you know what? They have a point because here's the problem. We only have two columns, but imagine we had like 10. Right. What happens when mobile views it? You're going to have to swipe over to see the whole yeah. table. So tables by default are not, anyone remember what I called it when... It works in different devices. Starts with an R. Sounds like responsive. <laughs> Good job, Jeff. You're a genius at this game. <laughs> yeah, responsive. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So 
the downside of tables are they definitely do not do so well on today's devices. Back when they came out, we didn't have devices. We had what's called computers. <laughs> you know, there were no phones, there were no tablets, and so it wasn't a big deal. There are ways uh, you might have seen even a table where a scroll bar will show up so that the page never swipes, the table swipes on your phone. Um, you can do that. You can make it's. It's not really making the table responsive per se. What they're doing is it's kind of like wrapping a div around the table uh-huh. and making the div a certain size, but saying, "Hey, if it goes outside this bounds, like right here, add a scroll bar, and then you can swipe it." So good for tabular data, not good for multiple devices, things like that. And that's why you'll hear people say, "No, you should use." Remember the divs we talked about uh-huh. last week. Div sections, articles, and all that stuff, because those you can make responsive. Um, now, there are some little JavaScript libraries out there that'll take tables, and when it hits a certain like width on a device, it'll actually turn each row into a vertical, um, but that's not built into the web. Yeah, so, in other words, instead of seeing like this, uh-huh. you'd see like uh, first name, Jeff, and then under it, oh, last okay. name, uh, Taft. So it's like it like flips it, but that's not built into the web by default. That one you got to do a little trickery, <laughs> but it's possible. That's where JavaScript comes in uh, for the most part. Now, could we do the same thing with divs and make it where it adjusts and even goes down? You think? Yeah, you could. Now, what do divs do though when you put them next to each other? What are they called? Divs are. I'll give you a hint. Yeah, we have block. span, yeah, block yeah. level spans. We said are in line where it stays on the same line. Divs we said last week are block level where it wraps. So now, obviously, what if I put two divs next to each other? What's going to happen? Yeah. Okay, but with CSS you can go like back up, and that's where Bootstrap and Foundation and Pure these are CSS libraries that will help you with that, uh, which we'll get into later. Okay, so good. Um, and you had one more, I think. I did an uh, ordered list. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So um, I'll just keep throwing these in for now. And if you guys did any of these, then you could say, yeah, that was my idea. I guess, Danny, that's what you can do. Danny will be like, I researched the image, the table, and the ordered list. <laughs> or unordered. So do you say... Okay, that's ordered list. Okay, now this is a bulleted list. That's really all it is. So for those that have never seen this, it's just another tag. Okay, good. Then what? And then uh, in between, you got your list element. So li. Yep, list item. And then uh, I did golf courses. So I, yeah, that's cool. I, I put like TPC sawgrass and then I, you know, did the uh, uh, 45. Oops. Okay. We'll just put to do's. And, or totos. Yep. And there you go. Now, notice this one, well, and I, I kind of said that wrong, didn't I? Because I said it's like a bulleted list, but we didn't do a UL, which is an unordered list. We did a ordered list. I think the UL does the bullets, right? Yep. If I just change this to UL, now notice we get the bulleted list. Now, what's cool about these, most of the menus you see out there these days, they're actually these. Really? Yeah, and you might go, they, 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 yeah, they're using CSS. Next to each other. You can basically uh, turn off the bullets. You can do list item style, stuff like that. Um, and then you can make it where they just go like this. Yes. Or, or if you see one that is uh, yeah. vertical. Yeah. It probably is that as well. Just right click view source or hit remember last week we yeah. uh the inspect. Yeah, we talked about the inspect where you can right click inspect. Uh let me do this over here because the camera. So I know it's in the bottom right. And then okay, wow, this is really big. So say we can hit this guy. And then you can go up and start looking. Well, their menu is totally different, but and you can Dive in. Now, these are all divs, it looks like. Notice. In fact, there's uh, actually some navs, navs for navigation. Talk about that maybe later. 
But okay, cool. Good. All right, so you got uh, OL is ordered list. That's one, two, three, four. You can even change that to A, B, C, D. You can do anything, pretty much. Okay. Roman numerals. So how, is that in the styling you change? Yeah. It? Yep. You can set the list item style. Um, See, so now, now that's one I never change. So where might we find how to do that real quick? Let's let's do real life here, because that one I don't really change it much. Mozilla or... Yeah. Dev.mozilla.org, um, or we could go uh, W3Schools, we talked about. So, yeah, let's come on in, and let's do, I think it's list item style or something like that. The style type, yeah, that, that's it, actually. Disk, circle, square, decimal, Georgian, I can't say I've tried that one. Uh, CJK, ideographic. Can't say I've tried that one. Or banana. No. Canada? <laughs> what is that? Canada? Canada. I, Canada. <laughs> I have not tried those, folks. But you'll see they're just uh, show you some examples here. So here's one uh, uh, where they, I don't know. Oh, they let you set it right here. Check this out. Yeah. So lower alpha. Disk. Disk is the default for a UL. Square. And this is why I like dev.mozilla.org. It's a great way to, because like, I don't use this hardly ever. But when I do need to change it, I'll just go to here and uh, do that. Where's that? Can, 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 I found uh, there. Let me see. Where's there? But this one? You know those? He took a class. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. I don't know what that one is. <laughs> it looks Canadian. <laughs> it looks Canadian. I think it's an A. <laughs> one A, two A. If anyone's from Canada, that's the only way I can ever tell someone's from Canada because they'll, they'll always throw the little A on the end. Because otherwise, they sound like everyone in Arizona, pretty much. But anyway, pretty cool though, right? Because now you can come in and you can change the uh, the list item type, you know, to like. Square. So how might I do that, you think? In fact, they'll probably... Let's scroll on down here. Yeah, there we go. So look where they're putting the... This is... Uh, I'm going to do an inline style, but see the OL right there? Okay, that we'll get to that later. But for now, let's come back and... So what do you think I could probably do here? Style equals... Paste that in and square or Canada. and there you go. Oh, now I can say I've used it. <laughs> and, and you know, someone that eventually will watch this is going, "You guys are idiots." This is how you say it. <laughs> not, I'm not sure what that is. I've never used that one. So, somebody, if you do know what that is, leave a comment in the YouTube comments, and we'll all be educated. On what that is. All right. Pretty cool, though, right? Because you can totally customize it. Um, <clears throat> you can also come in and do none. Oh. All right. So notice how it indents it, though? In? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, that's where CSS is really handy. So, again, I'm just throwing little tidbits here for you guys right now because we haven't covered it. But that way, when we see this, you'll go, oh, yeah, I remember that. That's so not padding. that bad. So. Yep. The padding margin. We'll go ahead and leave square in for now. Cool. Okay. So we got UL uh, is bullets, and OL is like numbers by default. But you can change it. Yep. To anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> to stuff, stuff we're not even sure. Stuff we're not even sure how to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have any others? Nope. That was it. Good. Seth? Oh, I also did table. I did sure. Table. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> I did the list as well. Um, then I also had quote. Quote. On uh, the Q U O T? Uh, this one was just a Q bracket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever used that one actually, but here, let's go. Now, see, this is where that's one I have not used. Uh, where'd the search go? It's up. Oh, there it is. 
Let's see here. Mm, I don't think this, yeah, this is CSS. Might just have to search for Q. Yeah, now that's one I really haven't used much. Yeah, here we go, inline quotation. Okay, so one thing, um, and, and I'll admit total ignorance on this one because I literally don't think I've ever used it before. That doesn't mean it's a bad tag, by the way, Seth. <laughs> like, you picked a lame tag. I just, you know, the thing with web apps, it totally depends on what you're doing. But here's the thing you're now seeing. No, first off, I do not have everything memorized. But within usually, you know, 60 seconds, I can find it. And that's, honestly, that's the key to being a good web developer eventually is you, you know how to work things fast enough that you're not slow. So tell me about the tag. Um, it's for um, inline um, quotation, so it only works for short. So short, short quotes. Um, there's another one uh, with a block quote. Yep, That's block quote. A, that actually um, links to a URL. Um, you would link that to a... Notice no quotes around it, though? And uh, notice there's a little gap. Different type of tag. Let's go back to the queue. Okay. And notice uh, the table kind of, uh, my guess is the table probably bumped that down. Let me, we can tell by this. Let's put span. Remember the inline stuff? Yeah. So see how this did not wrap under? So what must the queue tag be? Block quote or inline? It's inline. Yep, because if we put a div here, <coughs> see how it wraps the span down? Okay, keep going, Seth. Good. Any, I mean, anything else on that tag you noted? Or is that, I mean, that's a, that one's a pretty that basic was, one from yeah, what I know. That was pretty much all I picked. Yeah. Um, the other one was uh, a site. So a citation. Oh, okay. I don't think I've used that one much either. Oh, I saw that one too. Uh, so uh, you're talking about like if you're like uh, uh, like a, you're referencing a source or yeah. whatever, and it goes down below. Ah, so if you gotta <laughs> spell it right. So you the Canadians now. <laughs> oh, you be careful, man! I got friends yeah, in Canada. <laughs> there it is. Oh yeah, the C I T E. So used to describe a reference to a cited creative work. And the beauty of these tags, because this is another one I just don't use, but there's an example right there. In fact, let's just copy this in. What's the P tag? Paragraph. Paragraph, yep. Block or inline P tag? Block, Block. correct. Good memory. So let's take that out. We'll put this in. And notice it kind of italicized it, looks like. And so that's a citation. Anything else on that one, Seth? Okay. Good. So, so you actually hit two tags that I work mostly on kind of line of business apps. So that's why I like quotes, not as much. Citations, not as much. But can you imagine if you're doing scientific research? Medical journals, those type of sites, uh, even uh, articles, yeah. just generic articles out there. You could see citation and the Q tag being important. In fact, the Q tag, you probably wouldn't do it on its own. You would style it. Have you ever yeah. seen how they'll have the kind of pull aside quotes that are really big and the yeah. quotes look kind of yeah. cool? Yeah. yeah. Well, you can style that stuff. That's yeah. how they're most like They'll have the quote in the, in the paragraph and then they'll have it again below. Like, yeah. Where it's like real big. Pushed off the side yep. Yep. Alexa said she was creeping on us on YouTube. Oh, did she tune in? <laughs> yeah. We have a viewer. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, we probably have like one viewer. Let's see if we have We're any. Watching now. I think that's me. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not on the page. I'm not on the page. So that might be Alexis. <laughs> hey. That's, that'd be funny if she found it. <laughs> yeah, she said she was watching your video that is being live right now. So. <laughs> I wonder if she found it. How did you find that? I have no idea. 
<laughs> Maybe if you search for my name or something. That's but she'd be the only one that could spell it, probably. Probably. <laughs> That's why the site is codewithdan.com. <laughs> we gave up. Walling Consulting goes there, but Walling Consulting, nobody can spell it, turned out. It just took me 15 years to figure that out. <laughs> that's why nobody's spelling I know. That's why nobody. What? Um, all right. Cool. Danny? Tags? Uh, same thing, actually. Mm. I guess that's not right here, but I did have a table, and then it was, I think I quote one of those, and then I did do the third tag. Mm. Slap, slap him there. We don't want too much physical violence on camera, but hey, you got to motivate. <laughs> Off screen violence is okay. Off screen violence is okay. Don't mind the sound effects. That's right. Yeah, they can't see you anyway, Jeff. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so let's uh, let's take that back out. All right. So first off, any questions on the – now, obviously, we can go way more into these, but any questions on the table, kind of what that's for in general? Do you think he can nest tables? Can I put a whole nother table in a TH or a TD? Probably, yep. Yeah. That gets evil these days. Don't do that. Sure. <laughs> Unless you have a good reason. I mean, there are reports that, you know, where you'll have nested things. Um but unless you're in that scenario, you pretty much don't want to do that these days because it's not going to scale very well on devices. All right. Um, moving on down. Any questions on the UL or OL? That one's pretty common, by the way. Okay. Table. I don't use tables much. It used to be, just so you guys know, back in the old days, um, when I say old days, I mean 90s, early 2000s, um, which was old days for some people. Um, tables were really common for laying out your site because you'd have uh, your header and your footer and your, like, uh, maybe a, a horizontal or a vertical menu over here and then content, and those would all be, like, table cells and rows. But then what happens again once mobile devices come out? Not as good. Yeah, it starts wrapping weird and... So if you ever go to a site, right-click view source, and they're still using tables for layout, that's probably old school. Well, it's either old school or they don't know what they're doing. Um, could be I the picked up this book from '97. Probably <laughs> told me to do it this way. Probably, probably. But anyway, uh, so tables they're still valid for like grids and tabular data, but other than that, I would kind of steer clear of tables and use divs and stuff with CSS for layout. Um, so OL, UL, uh, kind of two reasons you might see those. Number one, obviously a bolded list or numbered list. But number two, I, I told you a lot of the menus and stuff will use that. Um, they'll change the CSS, though. I, I'm On an app I'm working on right now, I'm using it for that, where I have my menu laid out. In fact, let me uh, remember that bootstrap site I was telling you about last time. It's called getbootstrap.com. We'll, once we get to CSS, we won't learn this first because you need to know CSS before you learn this. But let me just show you something in the docs here um, really quickly here. So when it comes um, to, like, you know, ULs and all that fun stuff, let's go look at um, a nav. Let's do a nav here, and they'll have a sample. Oh, well, this one, eh, no, this one, my, eh, there's one right there. So look at uh, at the top here, active, link, link, disabled. And then notice down here, disabled, link, link, active. But look at it. See how it's a UL, uh, but it's an LI, right, list item. But yet it did that. So what's going on? CSS. CSS. How would I know what's going on? Right-click inspect. And if it doesn't go right where you want, which it did, so we can click on this UL now. Look what is on it. Class equals nav. Okay, well, that must do something with the navigation, right? Justify content center might. Center. <laughs> Maybe center the content. I don't know, you know. And then if we look down here below, here's, here's what the nav is doing. So they have a special thing called a flex box that, that will let you lay things out like horizontal. 
That's actually what it does by default, but you can flip it different ways. Um, and so let's let's uncheck this. And we'll kind of mess with this real quick. There we go. See how it just went vertical? So is CSS minorly important in websites? <laughs> just minorly. Yeah, CSS is like super critical. There's a lot of uh, developers. I'm not one of them because I learned CSS right when it first, first came out. So I don't know. I, I think it's easier when you have done it for a long time. But I have a particular friend who is genius. We'll just call him genius boy. Uh, he just hates CSS. <laughs> And, and a lot of developers do because it's just sometimes you just play with it till it works. So what is he? Oh, well, he uses it, but he hates it. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's his worker? <laughs> no, he uses it, but he he you know calls me or <laughs> when he gets stuck <laughs> or another buddy. Uh, so that's how you can start playing around. Um, so notice that. Look what that display flex is doing. Now, as a heads up, some of these features here, they won't even work in some of the older browsers. When I say older, I mean like I Internet Explorer 9, uh, even 10, I don't even know if it would work in, in this. Uh, in fact, do you guys want to learn another cool website? That was really dumb, I know. I was going to do my sales routine, you know, like, and if you call in the next 30 seconds. So how would you know, like, this thing called Flex, it's called Flexbox. How would you know, so what browser does that work in? Because this is the problem with web development. You'll see something, and you'll go, that is freaking awesome. And then you get a customer complaint. This doesn't look good on theirs. Well, probably because, you know, they're on, like, web TV or something, uh, which is from, like, the probably 90s or something like that. <laughs> Um, well, there's a site called caniuse.com. Can I use, let's do flex, flexible box layout module. So I could just type flex there, scroll down, and look what we have. Looks like IE11 is still questionable. Uh, IE11 is still used at a lot of corporations. In fact, there's a lot of corporations that I work with that they are just now moving to IE11. Um, they're like on IE9 or IE10 still. Um, the general rule nowadays, like at the app I'm working, if you're not on IE11, I'm pretty much just not going to care. Um, because it is such a pain to su so, uh, support the old browsers. Um, have you guys heard of IE6? That's old Internet Explorer that everyone whines about. But I think it came out in like 2002. What do you expect? I mean, geez, it's 16 years old. Um, yeah, it's crappy. It's 16 years old. Uh, Microsoft back in those days kind of went their own direction. And they didn't always follow the standards. Now, Edge and the latest IEs, they're now back and they're following the standards. What's the current IE? Uh, most current IE is 11, but that's as far as it's going. Okay. Um, Edge is yeah, where I, they're putting all their yeah. work. The problem with Edge, it, it's actually a really good browser overall. Um, there's a site, I'd have to dig it up, where you can see how standards compliant the browsers are. It's They have done a complete about face. Uh, from, we're doing it our way, back when they used to rule the browser world, to, no, we're going to be super strict, which is a good thing. Um, if every browser were to follow the same standards, then everything would be consistent. But Safari does things different than Firefox, which does things different than Chrome, which does things different. But the new versions of those are pretty good. So that's one of the uh, uh, fun aspects of web development, is that just because it looks good doesn't mean it looks good. <laughs> yeah. uh, plus, you got all the phones. Because uh, what version, you know, like iOS, most people update, uh, but not always. What about Android, though? Yeah. I mean, it's all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Android's extremely fragmented. Uh, so, you know, you get somebody that's on one of the old Samsung, uh, you know, Galaxy, I don't even know what was the first one. One, probably? I think, yeah, I think it was two. the Galaxy. The Galaxy? Yeah. I have no, unless they've updated it, and I'm sure you can only update it so far. Right then they got an old piece of crap browser. And so, like, sites built using this guy probably won't even work. So, something to keep in mind. Um, whereas, look at Chrome. Good story. 
Uh, look at Firefox, great story. Safari, uh, even iOS Safari. I mean, even even some of these are all uh, uh, mobile type browsers here, and even they are pretty good. It looks like. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, I is uh, uh, you know I, I do a lot with Microsoft technologies too, but I will admit, and so will everyone at Microsoft, <laughs> that eh, you know I uh, it got better with ten and eleven, but certainly, but it's still a little hidden. Yeah, whereas Edge, I really like Edge. I, I Chrome's my yeah, yeah that's what Chrome's I'm using here. Uh, the app. So I'll give you a real quick like what to watch out for. So right now I'm working on an app for a project. And uh, I'm only using Chrome right now. Like, that's the only thing I've tested in. And I'm pretty far into it. Uh -huh. And I guarantee I'm going to have some pain coming up because I should have started looking more at Firefox and Safari and all that. I, I have, by the way, but just not detailed. Uh, because what will happen is it works great. And then, Seth, you pull up, like, Safari. And all of a sudden, you're like, why does the menu look like, you know, crap? And it's just because there's some little tweak you're going to have to make to accommodate, you know, that browser. Now, if it's the latest versions, it should be pretty good. But anyway, can I use .com? Pretty cool. All right. Um, so going back to our lowly, uh, this all started from our lowly UL. <laughs> our bullet. This is 45 minutes? Okay, cool. Wow, this is going fast for me. Um, okay, cool. And Danny, you covered all your tags, I think. Yeah. You had the same ones, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Which basically means you didn't do anything this week. <laughs> and I'll tell you why I'm it, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so, moving on, um, I think what we'll wrap up with, because we only got about 15 minutes here, I, I want to try to keep make sure we keep these to uh, definitely an hour at the most. Um, any questions on any of the tags we've covered so far? Some of those are a little more obscure, like the quote one you may or may not use. Depends. Uh, site, maybe. Uh, any questions on those? How are you guys doing on like tags? Pretty good. Okay. The beauty of this is you don't even have to memorize. As long as you know that W3 Schools or the Dev.Mozilla, you do what I did like on the site one because I don't think I've ever used that tag, or even the Q, the quote tag. I don't think I've ever used that tag, not even once. Could be just I should have. <laughs> Didn't know about it, or I don't know. Okay, cool. Um, so that kind of gets us into HTML. Now, what we're going to do is we will continue. Let me, uh, okay, I think it's saved, actually, so we should, should be good if I refresh. If not, no big deal. Well, let's see. Change you made may not be saved. I think they are, though. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. No, actually, I don't think they are. There we go. You'll see a little dot up on the tab. Okay. I don't know if you notice that. And that's kind of like easy. I don't know why they don't have. Yeah, maybe that was lit up and I just didn't notice. I don't know. But anyway, let me refresh. And go back. Yep. Okay. So we're good. So same link. We'll just kind of keep building out. Okay. We'll start tweaking things. But... In fact, normally, you know, like a table, you'll probably have the header first, right? So let's go ahead and we'll just move this just to show you order kind of matters. Uh, let's put it under the article, actually. Just kind of out of the way. All right, cool. Let's... Uh, pop it down. Okay. That is one beautiful page, folks. Yeah, this is how you make the big bucks right here, guys. That's <laughs> all you need to know. I must have been really bored because when I was doing my did golf, because it says this is a div, this is another div. Yeah. And then I, did, I took a golf picture, I go, this is it, and then I put a heading underneath. This is a div it. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and, and then, and then I, I did the list of golf courses, and then Good. my table was at, uh, uh, favorite athlete. Sport, age, hair color, or whatever. <laughs> like, nice. I don't know. Beautiful. Somehow, oh, somehow, does does not surprise me. You did sports. <laughs> Jeff is a sports addict. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> cool. 
Um, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. We only have about 10 minutes at the most. So let's start to get into just a little bit on CSS then. Now that you guys have seen the basic tags. Now, there are a ton more tags, just as a heads up. Um, we have covered the main ones, though. I mean, what's the one you'll probably use the most out of all of these so far? Div. Div, probably. Remember Div Soup? Um, <laughs> what if you want stuff on the same line? Span. Span. Uh, obviously, the easiest one. What if I want tabular data? <laughs> Table. Maybe table, maybe. Um, they actually have, and I have to look in the, this is all new bootstrap, by the way. This new one's only been out for maybe 10 days or two weeks. It's really new, um, this layout of the docs and stuff. Let me, let me move this real quick. Let me go in. And, yeah, I don't know if they still have it there. No, they don't. Let me go to layout, though, and I'll show you real quick here. Okay, so see this one of three columns, one of three columns, one of three columns? But look at the code below. Let me uh, make that just a tad bigger there. Okay, so div, 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 but what do we know divs do? They're blocked. They're blocked. They stack, exactly. But yet they're horizontal. Well, remember that flexbox thing? What Bootstrap is doing, see that class equals container, class equals row, class equals column small, column small, column small? What it's doing is taking the width and making three columns, but it, by default, it does them horizontal. Now you can change it back to the vertical with this flex box, but that is one way um, you can do it. So, so they're tweaking it. So does that, like, okay, so it says one of three columns since they all say the same thing? Yep. If they were to say, the second one to say two of three columns and the third three of three columns? Yep. Do they go in order, like, from left to right, like from top to bottom? Top to bottom. Right? Top okay. to bottom, yep. Now, you can change that, though. Oh. Um, you can actually reverse it. <laughs> oh. In fact, right now, just as a, to give you how cool this is, though, this is a new thing, by the way. That's what we just looked at, obviously, on caniuse.com, is this you know, Flexbox concept. And what's so cool about this is um, I right now have a kind of, uh, I don't know, think of it like table of contents over on the right. But I'm not sure I want to keep it there. Uh -huh. I might allow, you know, a user like you guys to go into a settings and they might, Jeff, you might say, oh, I want it on the left. Okay. But I, I kind of like it on the right because since you read from left to right, well, hopefully you do. Um, <laughs> I kind of like the content over there and then on the far right, you know, you have your kind of thing, right. table of contents. But for some people, they like, like theirs on the left, right? Because it's more of a menu. Right. So... With just a little bit of tweaking, in fact, they probably show that, and in fact, I know they do down here somewhere. Um, and, ah, here we go, reordering. Uh, see this? Order 1, order 12. Now, notice this says third but first. All right? <laughs> third but first. Uh, first but ordered. Third but first, second but last. So... Basically, what's going on here is you can control the order of these by putting some other CSS classes, they're called. Okay. All right. Now, having shown you that, I just wanted to show you a little bit. Let's wrap up then, and then next week we'll do some more CSS. We'll start to get into that. Let's go to our, like, article. And if I wanted to add, like, a border, you know, just a, like a box around it, what attribute? Remember the thing that goes on the tag is called an attribute. What would I add? And I'll give you a hint. We did it earlier today. Uh, How do you style something? That might have been a little bit of a giveaway. Uh, style. Yeah. <laughs> equals. Okay. Style equals. Or, uh, yeah. In this case, we this could just put. I was going to say it's probably BDR. <laughs> now, this is new, so I'm just going to throw this in real quick. All right. Notice it put a black border. Okay, now what's going on here? First off, we're styling the article, which is a block level tag. Now you can see it's a block. 
right? Because it looks like a block now. We are setting an attribute called border. Now, how did I know to put border? You don't. This is where you run off to W3Schools or <laughs> dev.mozella and you look up the word border or padding or something like that. Gives you the and it gives you the format, yeah. So it's it's. I want it to be one pixel. Well, watch. Let's do ten pixels. Okay. Don't do that, please. <laughs> Don't try that at home, kids. You might hurt yourself. Okay. Solid. But we have all kinds of uh, things we can do. I don't know if you can see that. But now uh, yeah. it's dotted. And I'd have to even look those up because you don't really use those as much these days. Solid's the big one. And then black. Or you can give it. Black is also, that's the hex code for black. Um, it's actually technically six of these, but if they all repeat, you can just do three. But for now, don't worry about that. Just black is black. Red is red. Okay, if you want red, now it's red. Do they have the, are the hex codes? Are the, like, letters too, are they? Or are they? Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's alphanumeric. D, B, D, B, D, B. Oh, yep. The gray yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I use uh, CCC or EF, EF, EF six times. Uh, I use that a lot for my gray. Yep. yep. Uh, e, B, E, B, E, B, I think is one I've used. In fact, here, just to show you, what was one you said, Jeff? D, B, D, B, D, B. Yeah. Kind of a light gray. Uh, or you might, CCC is a little darker, I think. Barely. Uh, or this can be really light. EF, EF, EF. Yeah, see how it's really light? That's why you sound like the non-programmers when you're speaking to them about programming. Yeah. Like, like numbers and yeah. yeah. They're like, this is so hard. <laughs> see, here's the thing. I don't even remember hexadecimal anymore. I haven't had to use it, you know, but it was A through F, I think, and then uh, certain numbers, you know? Yeah, exactly. Remember I showed you? There's a color picker. Yeah, exactly. Photoshop has a color picker. Yeah. Uh, VS Code Editor I use has a color picker. Uh, the browser, in fact, look up here. See this little Chrome tool I have right here? It's an extension. Well, guess what it does? It lets me go grab any color I want and watch when I click. All right, that is black. <laughs> All zeros. And then I just put the, uh, that's how I figure out the hexadecimal code. Right there. I, uh, if you really want to impress friends and family, you, you do this. You go... Well, you know, guys, if you really know your stuff, you do, like, well, you say, you know, you could do Navy, right? Or, I'm going to do a little off shade. Okay? And then everybody goes, oh, my gosh, how does he know that? That's, like, one of five I have memorized. <laughs> I used to use that one all the time because I'm kind of a, a blue lover. Uh, all right, so anyway, you kind of get the idea there? Now, um, let's do, let's go back. And yeah, we only got like three minutes here and we'll wrap up. What else could, let's take, let's take out, well, let's leave the border actually. We're going to have to kind of keep going here so you can see it. But, uh, notice how the border is pretty close to the text. So, and notice the gap on the left side from the, the box. So you have what's called margin. So if I just say one pixel, well, let's do like 10 pixels here. See how it bumped it over? And I don't know if you noticed, but it gave more gap around. Now the so, E, go ahead, sorry. So I was just saying, so the margin is the margin around the Around line. the outside. Okay. Okay, and the way you can see that is, well, yeah, I don't know if I can see it here as good. Yeah. So margin is the out. If you look at this picture here. Border is obviously the border. Padding is inside of the box. Okay, we're going to play with that to wrap up here. And then this is the width and height. You see right here. Okay, pretty cool. So you don't even have to memorize this. If you just right-click on it and inspect, you'll see this guy. But just know that margin is what's outside of the box. Then you have the border. Then you have padding inside. So let me show you padding. Uh, all these are useful, by the way. Now watch the box here. But I'm going to change this instead of margin. To padding. See how it's inside? Now, again, if you're new to this or anybody watching, go, how would I know to do that? You don't. This is where, this is why we're holding these workshops. It's where you go look it up. This is super important, though, because 
And and by the way, wh- what does it apply in the padding to? The top, the left, the bottom, what? All around. All around. That's what it does by default. Now, you could even do this. Let me do like 20 pixels. We'll make it big. See how the top stayed, bottom stayed, right? You can't tell. Look at the left. Okay, or let's do padding top. And notice it bumped it back to the left. Okay, or you can even control, let's do something really big and then a little smaller here. Or you can even do this. So what did the 50 apply to? The top. And the bottom. And then what did the 10 must have obviously applied to? Left and the right, yeah. Now that one gets a little more cryptic. Like, because to be honest, those sometimes I forget which is which. So I just play with it. <laughs> nope, that's not what I meant. You know, I'll, I'll, like I'll forget that. I mean, now I know. But back when I started, you forget. Yeah, and you might like do this, you know, 10, 50. And, well, the good news is it's pretty easy to see. Oh, no, I got it backwards. So then you undo it. Now, a lot of times, though, I don't need necessarily all of them. There are other techniques here, but I could say, like, I want the left 20. Semicolon separates the styles. It makes it's like it's almost like a period to end your sentence. And then padding top is, you know, 20 pixels. And now see how only the left and the top got padded. But in this case, it probably makes more sense, right, to just pad everything like that. Yeah. Looks a little better. Let me save that. Okay, so that's just a real quick introduction. Now, these are called CSS properties, by the way, of the style object. So every tag, every element, has a style associated with it. Think of it as a little bucket of little knobs you can tweak. That's the styles. Um, and like if you've ever done, uh, you know, like in... Word or PowerPoint or Google Docs type things. You know, you can go in and click on something and then change the font size and, you know, change the font, all that. That's, you know, text styles, right, of Word or Google Docs. Well, in this world, it's the same thing. It's just that it's not as user friendly. <laughs> all right. So, so when you, so that's your CSS, but then like, the CSS sheets are like your style sheets are, are like a separate file. Is that yeah, correct? we'll do. We'll start getting to that next week. This do I recommend this normally? No. Putting the style directly into the HTML. Not because, normally. Because it's not reusable. It's not reusable. Yeah. yeah, because what if I want this guy to have it, and I want you know I don't know something down here to have it, like the table. Well, now I have to. I mean, I can do it, but now I got to copy. You know, go down to here, paste it, and yeah, it worked, but maintenance, that's yeah. sort of important in this world. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's some teams in the corporate world that they, ha- as soon as they finish developing a site, they hand it off to what's called production support, and that's a team. And then they're kind of like, wash their hands of it. Now production support has to deal with it. But a lot of companies, especially smaller companies, or government organizations I've been with, they do their own production support, even a lot of corporations, where you're responsible for everything. And back in the day, I used to have a pager. <laughs> I was used to, people would ask, before you were born, uh, people would ask, what do you do for a living? And say, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a doctor. Oh, really? What kind of doctor? Oh, I'm a, I'm a doctor of code. <laughs> now, what? Because literally at 2 in the morning, you get paged because one of the systems would go down, and then you hope you don't have to go into the hospital which is the server room. <laughs> you, you would log in, hopefully, with VPN, but back then we had modems and stuff, so sometimes it would break. Um, but get the idea? So next week we'll, uh, we'll go into CSS more and uh, start talking about what you mentioned, Jeff, is a, it's called a style sheet, and uh, we'll learn how to make a separate file and do it. Cool. All right. How was it? Fast one for me, man. The whole week flew. Yeah. Today I'm like, what? It's uh, yeah. time to start up again. We yeah, just finished last week. It was the Super Bowl. It was because of the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was. 
That, was that a crazy happened game. that Sunday. That yeah. was like a high paced, you know, game. Yeah. And then by by the time yeah, I think by the time I realized that it was Wednesday, I felt like it was like Monday night. You know, <laughs> yeah. Just like it just yeah. went by really <laughs> fast this week. It was a fast week, I'll tell you, but. Anyway, all right. Well, if anybody, if for the one person that tuned in live, since we didn't announce it, we'll, yeah, Alexis, we'll see how this goes because maybe we'll live stream next week. I'm, I don't know. I got to check out the quality and I got to figure out the syncing of the audio. So, I know you'd think, well, my my expensive one that does it does sync. This one is the cheap one and it's awesome, but I don't think it has a sync option. So, so if you don't use the same camera mic, right. it's going to be out of sync a little bit. Anyway, all right, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Until Thank next you. time.